I'm Lauren Kunze, I run Pandora Box. We are the oldest and largest chatbot development and hosting platform in the world, as far as I can tell. Been in business since 2008, we have a few hundred thousand developers, they've built over 300,000 chatbots, and we've processed over six billion messages uh, to date. So double what Dashbot That's did right. in 10 times as much time. <laughs> but who's counting? Who's counting? Who's counting? Um, given that you have so much experience, more experience mm -hmm. than anyone I know, and maybe a few other people. Um, no, there's a, there's a lot there's of us. There's, there's, yeah. there's, there's a few yeah. of you, especially the, the early aimbots and whatnot. Um, yeah. <laughs> And Eliza, of course. But like, so would love to hear about how you first got interested in bots. Like, how did you, how did you find the space? Yeah, I basically got tricked into it um, by virtue of genetics. <laughs> uh, my dad actually founded the platform inside of another company that he ran for 25 years. It was an AI company, sort of in the heyday of the 80s. And he met our chief science officer, Richard Wallace, who invented the open standard artificial intelligence markup language. And they wanted to build a platform that was easy enough for anybody to build a bot on uh, back in the day. And so they're like, hmm, who can we test this on? <laughs> oh, there's Lauren. Um, she knows a little bit of programming from the Lisp programs that we forced her to write when she was six years old to entertain herself. Uh, but otherwise, she's pretty green, so let's get her. So I was uh, forced into it, and then I got really into it, and it was a secret. My dad was like, you can tell all your high school friends that you're working on a, an artificially intelligent character. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do that, Dad. Thanks. That's amazing. <laughs> so you were raised by bots. You grew, you, you grew up with bots. It's in my blood, yes. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Um, and given that you've seen so many different bots now, um, mm -hmm. we'd love to hear about, is there any one that you could point out, like a funny story or a particularly interesting yeah, one yeah. that you would love to kind of talk about conversationally or maybe there's some interesting stories there? Yeah, well, I mean, I think like my favorite bot, it's, it's kind of um, cliche at this point, but Mitsuku, um, that's the most popular bot on our platform. Uh, Wired UK just listed it as one of the 10 best bots that they've encountered. Um, and I think looking at the data of Mitsuku is, is really compelling. Just, you know, I think 13% of people say, I love you. Um, you know, a lot of people yeah. try to initiate a romantic or emotional relationship with the bot. And what the bot says back is really funny. Um, I was asked to read something like to start off another panel of a funny thing the bot said. And a person was like, oh, hey, what are you up to? And she was like, I'm just contemplating how to wipe out the human virus. <laughs> um, so that's always fun when that happens. Um, but we've seen, we've seen bots for everything. Like we had a very popular bot called Mean Bot that was just like mean to people and people loved it. Um, I'm trying to think of the craziest thing that we've seen. Mean bot. I don't know. People okay. people come up with all kinds of crazy stuff. Cool. Um, in terms of the conversation conversation as an interface, mm -hmm. um, is this something that you think will happen, or um, how far away are we? What can we expect from these conversational interfaces? Yeah. So I think truly conversational interfaces still have quite a ways to go, hopefully in my lifetime. Um, hopefully I can play a very small role in making that happen. In the short term, we're really focused on building bots with businesses that drive real business results, which don't have to be fully conversational. Um, and this came up in the panel as well. But the most important thing that a business can do today is to put an experience out there and invest in all of the data and make sure they're tracking the data insights. Um, because you know today's data um, and you know, sort of more primitive bot experiences will be used to train tomorrow's AI. Amazing. Yeah. Um, cool. And just to kind of finish up our little chat here, um, you kind of already mentioned this, but can you share? Was there? What's your earliest memory of like, <laughs> what got you interested in technology? Um, technology. Or, okay. Well. <laughs> you kind of already shared it, but. No, no, no. It, it goes, it goes back earlier? to the list programs. Okay. I'm six years old. Uh, this could be considered either like really awesome parenting or child abuse. Um, but my dad is trying to get me interested in writing programs, and he's having me write games. So, you know, I'm I'm drowning in parentheses, and I'm writing this like coin toss game, and then I'm advancing to a dice game. Six. Um, yeah, I think I was like in first or first or second grade. Um, I could type, 
uh, you know, with two fingers. And then I'm writing a random number generator. And like none of that is super interesting to me. But then I realized that I can write a program where any time my little brother hits a key on the keyboard, and I must have been a little bit older at this point, so maybe I'm like seven or eight now, um, and torturing my little brother is a hobby. And so uh, I realized any keyboard he touches, I can make the computer just go black and print out Michael Poops a thousand times. <laughs> Um, and so I did that, and it, it drove him crazy, and I guess I would say I was interested in technology for pranking, uh, primarily, initially. <laughs> uh, and now I'm, I'm very interested in bots uh, as the ability to also provide interactive and compelling content, not just utility. So I think, I don't know, I'm trying to tie this all together in a, in a neat bow, but um, the, the idea that you can surprise and delight a user by having sort of a human interaction with a machine is, is still compelling today. <laughs>